Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread. My name's Crystal and today I have another unboxing for you. It is my monthly subscription box from Little Miss So-and-So. I get this box for free uh, as being an, a brand ambassador for the company and I have the So Luxurious box which normally costs I think £60 including postage and packaging. You get the fabric, the pattern, all the notions, a lovely treat as well um, to make up a, a wonderful pattern. Um, I'm going to open this live with you now and um as i was saying yes um, as part of the um the subscription service they do it's quite unique in that you get a choice between um a woven and um knit pattern every month and then you get a choice um of all their um knit uh, fabrics uh, so luxurious knit fabrics including art gallery um lady McElroy, um what are they called atelier brunette um, dashwood studios that sort of thing and then also with the woven if you choose the woven pattern you get a choice of all their luxurious woven patterns um so here it is the box i'm just opening it now for you beautifully wrapped there you go i'm going to open this so this month i went for the woven option um oh I went for the woven option and I believe the knit option was um, a dress like a fiber mood a jersey dress which I wasn't too keen on so I went for the woven option and this is the um, the pattern that I went for was the seasons of East summer in New York dress and for those of you that haven't heard of Seasons and East, it's a lovely pattern company. And what's unique about their patterns is their packaging. So you've got a lovely sort of cardboard sleeve here. It's got their lovely drawings there. It's got their sizes. This goes from a size 8 to a size 26. Bust of 33, waist of 26, all the way up to a bust of um, 52, waist of 45 inches and it takes three meters of fabric for both fabric widths um, and then not only does it have a lovely cardboard sleeve they also come the actual pattern comes in a lovely sort of what are these these called it's like a canvas bag with a london print on it um, and i think they have different prints for different um different skyline prints for their different um it's not london is it? it's new york different um skyline prints for their pattern so this one is called summer in new york hence the new york skyline there and then inside the envelope am i recording hopefully i am inside the um um bag you have their lovely oh i've never used them before their lovely um instruction booklets really nice quality proper card proper paper and inside you've got fully um colored photographs look at all those instructions step by step and i like how um when they do their instructions, I like it when the company chooses a fabric that you can tell uh, the obvious difference between the right side and the wrong side. Because sometimes if you if some companies have chosen plain fabrics and in photographs, you can't really tell whether it's the right side or the wrong side. So that just adds some complications sometimes. So this looks really good. Let me just get you the line drawings, maybe, if they have the line. I've not used this company before, so I don't actually know. Right, so here are the line drawings. So basically, it's a. it almost looks like a kimono dress. I'll show you there. It's like a kimono dress, kind of. So you've got grown-on sleeves. You've got a low V-neck here. You've got a skirt with um, waist darts. Um, but the back of it is quite, oh yeah, you can see it there. There's a gathered back. So it's kind of like a blousy back, but the front is quite fitted. Um but it's got enough ease that it's not too fitted, if that makes sense. So I quite like that. I have seen several um, several of the garments made up by Nicola from the Little Miss So-and-So and, -so and by Adele Sofa Serenity, who's also a brand ambassador. And it looks really, really nice. So I went for a plain fabric, which I'm kind of regretting now because Nicola's and um, Adele, they went for prints and it looks really, really lovely on them. So I'm hoping my one will come out as, as nice as theirs. Um, and here's a picture again of that one there. So you can see you've got the v-neck you've got the kimono grown on sleeves it's quite fitted well i wouldn't say fitted but it's it's more fitted than loose and then at the back is quite blousy which i can't show you the picture of the back actually what picture? no it's not showing me a picture of the back but anyhow you can see that from the um 
from the line drawings there is some gathering at the back there so it's quite blousy at the back which is lovely so in the um, pattern envelope you get the instruction booklet you get the pattern pieces um and then what they've changed this time round, as in last month's box and this month's box nicola now um has a little newsletter which is really really great um and it just tells you a little bit about the the pattern maybe some tips and tricks uh, about making up the pattern because she already makes um the pattern up um i think before it gets sent out and then the um leftover pattern boxes she then so the whole pattern the whole box she then sells on on her website um as a limited edition which is really really great um let's have a quick look so there's no real tips and tricks as such it's just describing a bit about the pattern company so summer in new york is a beautifully elegant midi length dress ideal for warm summer days darts tucks and a concealed zip provide shaping and fit whilst the loose wide sleeves and side split gives a relaxing a lovely relaxed vibe it says pre-wash your fabric blah 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 excellent so yeah she was just saying that these little bags could make like little gifts although i'm going to keep mine with my pattern because i like it so much um, and that's that so you get one of those as well uh, a little um sort of letter uh, to describe uh, just for hint, hints and tips or description of the pattern i get a um, invisible zip in sort of a nude beigey color so that's one of my notions matching thread gutterman's 100 um, meters matching thread lovely color i love this color it's like a dusky mauvey pink and um, this month's um gift are some sewing labels from little, little rosy cheeks made in me time which is perfect that is actually very much uh, my mantra at the moment and um, with baby theo being 10 weeks old um people are asking you know oh he's so cute is he a good baby and i have to honestly say he's not a good baby he doesn't sleep at all well he does sleep but he sleeps in sort of like half hour naps here and there um, and he has to sleep on somebody like in my arms and if i put him down he sort of wakes up straight away so that has become quite draining <laughs> over the past couple of weeks i literally have only made one thing in the month of June um, actually I made another a second dress in the month of June but that was a total failure so basically I've only made one wearable garment in the month of June where normally um, you know in the past I have made up to sort of 10 12 items a month so I literally do not have that much time to sew so that would be perfect for me made in me time um, although having said that, poor baby Theo, he has just recently, as of yesterday, actually, I need to, needed to get last month's box um, sewn up because I just had this one arrive and um, I was I was cradling him for a while and he was in my arms for about an hour and I thought I'll put him down and he went to sleep for six hours straight. So from 3 p.m. in the afternoon till about 10 in the evening and I had to actually wake him up because I thought that's too long now. But in that time, I was able to... Um, make up the whole of my garment for last last month's box which was the Edwige blouse by Vicky So so I made that all in that time um, and it's now finished and I'll show you that at the end of the at the end of this vlog so that's perfect labels for me sorry about the babble there and then the fabric I went for um is a lovely beautiful dusky pinky mauvey uh, viscose linen and I'll show you I'll show you the so I don't know if that's coming up, but it is more, it is pinky as opposed to nudie. It does kind of look a bit nudie. And I believe it's got viscose in it because it's not as stiff. So it's beautifully drapey and hopefully that will, oh, and it's got a bit of stretch in it, which is great. So that will be really great. I think a bit of stretch in sort of semi-fitted garments is lovely just for comfort of wearing. So that's the fabric that I went for. So I'm very excited to make that up. I'm going to pop that in the wash now so I can get that made up. And I think I will just try and get it done as soon as possible so I'm not then pushed for time at the end of the month when I have to reveal it. Um, especially now that baby Theo is kind of hopefully sleeping um, for a good um, length of time now. I might be able to get some of that done or even the pattern cut out. Um, but yeah, sorry, I know there's a lot of babble going on. I hope you don't mind. Um, I wanted to show you um, last month's make. So last month's make um, was the Edwige blouse by Vicky Sews. So just before I show you um, the pattern that I chose and the garment made up, I thought I would just share with you my screen um, going through um, how I chose my pattern and my fabric. So I'm going to share my screen with you right now. 
so you get an email link and then when you get to their website I the first thing I do is go to the filter so luxurious pattern stretch and last month's stretch pattern was the sew over it Marnie cardigan which is a lovely long line cardigan knit of course um, it's like a waterfall cardigan different lengths with pockets um and here are the line drawings and the sizes available uk 6 to 30 and then i go to the fabric choices for the stretch fabrics so we here we have cloud nine lady mcelroy jerseys again lady mcelroy viscose crepes jerseys um all lady mcelroy's florals some variegated french 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 terry Mm, again french terries there lady mcelroy's organic cotton jersey some polka dots there and some planes i would have loved this cardigan if it had like a navy or a black plain jersey um because i think that would go with everything but i went instead for the woven choice which is coming up now so this is the edwige blouse by vicky sews it's a lovely blousy blouse, as you can see. Bishop sleeves, deep cuffs, rouleau loops, gathered yokes. Um, I've never used I've never used a Vicky Sews pattern before, so it would be my first time. And th there's the measurements there, UK six to twenty four, and then you go to the fabric choices for the woven fabrics. Um, Lady McElroy's again here, viscose chalet prints, uh, viscose Florence crepe, chalet lawn. Visco Shelly Lawns. Sorry. Um, more Visco Shelly's. All Lady McElroy's. So they retail at £19 per metre. Um, oh, what happened? A Lady McElroy. I actually have this from the veranda Visco Shelly that I plan to make a, a different dress out of some lovely prints here um art gallery fabric boho fusion is the one that i went for in the end the burgundy uh, colorway i didn't realize they had it in a light pink that looks really nice sorry about the texts that are popping up so yeah i went for this art gallery one here on the left and that's that um and so let me show you the pattern uh in real life so it's the vicky sews blouse uh edwige blouse and it's this pattern here so as i say these are the line drawings you've got it's a very loose fitted blouse straight fit in the bodice you've got bishop sleeves deep cuffs rouleau loops all the way down the front here you've got um gathered yokes um, and also the cuffs um, are fastened with rouleau loops and covered buttons, in fact, actually. So these are all covered buttons as well. It goes from a size UK 6 to UK 24. Um, and that is, um, sorry, it's only in centimetres, bust of 80, waist of 60, all the way to a bust of 116, waist of 96. I ended up going for a one, two, three, four, five to um, the size 42, which is a six, eight, 10, 12, size 14, which is bust of 96, waist of 76. Now those aren't my exact measurements, but because of the ease involved, I thought that would fit quite nicely. Just a couple of things um, to say about this pattern. Um, I've heard from Nicola who did a review on her um, Instagram page and also Adele um, that's done um, a review on her on her youtube channel and uh, both of those ladies um who i trust their opinions both say that um the instructions were very well um you know written up and that it was a very easy so um for me I'm, I'm afraid to say i'm being honest it was it was very difficult for me i don't know why so the difficulty level it does say advanced there to be fair so what you have is these yokes are enclosed via the burrito method uh, and i have done the burrito method before in several dresses the stylark um bell dress i've also done it in the um closet core um what's my favorite dress the closet core 
can't, I don't know what it's called now, the closet core dress with the um, the new one. Next, the closet core next dress. I've done the, the burrito method, um, for, you know, quite a few times. And even with the simplest instructions, you know, sometimes you still need a YouTube video just to make sure you're doing the right thing. Now with this particular um, instructions, I will show you what I mean. So with the burrito method, um, uh, let me just show you. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So it says, okay, here. So it says, um, you know, once you've attached that, so you've attached, you know, you've gathered the yolk there and you've attached the front uh, part of the yolk. And then you trim the seam allowances, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, press the seam flat. Okay, press the yoke. Okay, and then it says, place the front yoke and the back pieces right sides together. Align the shoulder edges. Okay, so that's that's the burrito method there already. So the front yoke um, and the back, I can't really d demonstrate it. But basically, it, what by attach it by placing the front yoke and the back pieces right sides together, the rest of the blouse is then sandwiched in between. And there's a lot of blouse to get sandwiched into a narrow... Um, into a narrow yoke part so if you've not done it before or if you're not experienced you literally you will not be able to do this that would just that would just be really really confusing and it was confusing for me um except the fact that i have done it before so i knew what i what was you know what it was supposed to look like um and then after that the next bit is is that already it's already burritoed in together there so you know, I think maybe it should say place the front yoke and the back pieces right sides together, align the shoulder edges and then say, you know, uh, make sure the rest of the blouse is sandwiched in between both of the uh, yoke of the yoke pieces. Um, am I even saying that right? So it does, yeah, what it does say here, it says tuck part of the back piece in between the yoke pieces. But it just wasn't, I just don't think it was, it was clear enough for me anyway. And also the fabric that they've chosen to, um, to use for these instructions is just a plain green. So sometimes it's quite hard to figure out what, what you're looking at. So I quite like, um, you know, when they do instructions, um, with photos that they use it like a printed fabric. So you can tell what's the right side and what's the wrong side quite easily. So anyway, my yolks were fully enclosed via the burrito method anyway. Um, so I did that sort of just with my own knowledge. Uh, the only thing, the other thing as well is, so this blouse actually is a very, very nice blouse in the sense that it has so many beautiful finishing touches, as in this is the blouse that has everything. If, if you want to do like sort of the perfect blouse, this has everything because as I say, the yolks are enclosed. Also, the cuffs are um, attached to the sleeve in the bagging out method. So there's no seams on the inside here. It's fully enclosed. It's got the rouleau loops. It's got the covered buttons. What else? Also, it has bias binding to to cover the seam allowance of the sleeves which is a bit extra um and i will let you know what my my thoughts are and what i did and did not do so the first thing as i say was the yoke i thought the instructions for that wasn't as clear as it should be secondly um covered buttons i did um so in the box last month you did get the um covered buttons tools and so they're the different uh, button um, sizes that you can get. Then you put your button in with a fabric. You put that on top and you hammer it down with a mallet. The buttons that we received were these um, silver buttons here. I don't know if you can see. Uh, and that's the button, bottom bit there. And you're supposed to cut a piece of fabric out. Uh, bigger than the circle and then you put it on the top you sew some stitches pull the stitches together to enclose the fabric at the top and then you put that piece into this bit here you add the little top bit on top and then you put this on top and then you hammer it down so I attempted it several times um, and I've only got three ones that are made up but aren't very good so this is my first one cover buttons but unfortunately the button kind of um I kind of hammered it out of shape and it's not fully enclosed there which is annoying so that's the first one I did the second one I did is a bit bulky in the fabric so that's that one there 
but again it's not very neat where it's been enclosed inside and then the third one I couldn't even get I, I did try to add more fabric this time but it wouldn't even close together so basically there they are my three best attempts and I've had a couple of ones where the plastic was where the metal was just clamping together in the wrong way and then in the end I could see that my tool was starting to wear out as well so that's the one there you can see that it's starting to wear out where I've been hammering it down and you know what I as I say I don't have that much time to sew now with the baby and I was doing this actually whilst I had the baby on my lap in bed trying to get these buttons done and it just was not working and I thought to myself you know I'd rather get the garment finished um, and make some adjustments or make some replacements rather than you know stall and not get it done just because I can't do the buttons so what I ended up doing was just getting some buttons in my stash which I had the perfect size and actually the perfect amount 16 buttons of the same one so I just sewed those on instead um, so that resolved that problem <laughs> Secondly, the pattern has got shoulder pads on the top there at the shoulders, obviously, um, and you've got that in the pack as well. I didn't add mine because it looked quite squarey and boxy on me, quite 80s kind of dynasty style, and that wasn't the look that I was going for. So I decided not to put those um, shoulder pads on. Also, where they ask you to put the shoulder pads on, they actually ask you to cut fabric out to enclose the shoulder pads um, in fabric as well, which is another extra sort of beautiful finishing for the inside of this pattern if you wanted to go that far next um oh yeah so with the interfacing um in last month's box nicola did put a letter in the box as well explaining all the tips and tricks and i think for this particular pattern you do need a list of tips and tricks or for somebody that's made it and she said read the instructions fully before you start and i didn't read it fully fully i kind of um skim read it and with the interfacing, I ironed the interfacings on straight away, as did what Nicola did. Uh, but that was the wrong, wrong thing to do. So, for example, with the back yoke and the front facings, um, so normally you'd get, this is just a scrap of fabric. Normally this is your facing. You would get your interfacing and you would um, put it on the reverse side, iron that down together, and that's your facings done. That's normally what you do with, with most patterns. I don't believe I've actually seen this particular technique in any other pattern. But for this one, they want you to put your um, facing piece front sides together, your facing piece and your interfacing right sides together. And then you don't iron it on, you sew it down on one side. Let me say, you sew it down on one side and then you flip it over and then you press that down. So it's got a beautiful finish on the outside. And then you add this part here to your um, your bodice piece. So basically, I don't know if you, um, when you have facings, normally you finish the outside. So you normally finish this outside part with your overlocker. But um, by using this technique, you don't need the overlocker and you have a beautiful seam on every um, facing edge which is actually quite a beautiful thing to behold if, if I had done it um, unfortunately I didn't do it that way because I had already stuck my interfacing pieces together but that's a lovely idea I think for next time I think especially if it's just like the Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons pattern where you just need a back facing or something that has simple facings instead of doing the overlocker part on the outside part of the facing, having it enclosed within the interfacing itself I think it's actually really lovely um, so I don't I think that is a lovely thing and I should have done that really but I didn't read the instructions properly um the next thing as well the bagging out of the cuffs so as I say the cuffs are fully enclosed the sleeve is fully enclosed in the cuffs there's no seam allowances showing and I'll show you the instructions that they gave here as well page 32 it says place the cuff to the sleeves bottom edge right sides together align the edges based and stitch so now I thought that you would align so this is the sleeve here this is the cuff on the outside here I thought you would have to stitch both the cuffs together so the right side and the front the right side to so the front and the back of the cuff and this is the sleeve here I I sewed mine all together so all three layers together but then obviously it tells you to then um, insert the sleeve insert the sleeve inside the cuff and the only way I could have done that is if I had only sewn the first layer of the cuff and not the, the second layer of the cuff and it doesn't actually specify that on there and I think it should have sort of said place you know the front 
part of the cuff leaving the back part of the cuff loose or something like that so you're, you're you know that you shouldn't sew them all together if that makes sense so I wasn't able to bag out on the first cuff so I attempted it on the second cuff so I only sewed the front part of the cuff and not the bot the back part and I still couldn't do it I don't know I, I still I still couldn't do it I don't know maybe it's baby brain I just didn't find these instructions very helpful for me in particular I don't know maybe I was pushed for time I mean I did have six hours to make it it was just such a, a bit of a struggle for me to be fair so what I ended up doing is just um, attaching the cuff uh, normally and then overlocking the edges as I would have done with any other pattern that didn't have a beautiful finish um, the third thing as well, another beautiful finish that they um, recommend or that they instruct you to do is to cut some bias binding and use that to um, conceal your seam allowance for your sleeves. I didn't do that either because I thought that is an extra bit of faff that um, I just didn't think it was necessary. I mean, it is a beautiful finish inside. I just didn't think it was necessary. And as I say, I didn't have that much time to do it. Um, so that's that. Uh, let me just see. Yes. And then the other thing was the, the French seams on the sleeves. So normally with a French seam, in my, from my recollection anyway, so you get, you sew your two pieces together, don't you? So you sew your two pieces together. And then normally you, you open them up, you press them flat, um, pressed them flat away from each other and then you you trim one half down and then you use the other the other seam allowance to go over that to cover the seam fully I hope that's making sense so that's what I know a French um, seam to be here the instructions I just didn't I just didn't get it I didn't get it I don't know why um but Adele and Nicola obviously got it so the seams here so so it says, so it says here, so this is your sleeve folded in half. You're supposed to, um, you know, sew it down that part to join the sleeves together, to join the sleeve piece together. Press the seam flat, which is fine. I can do that. And then it says, press the seam allowance towards the back of the sleeve. That's fine. I can do that. Actually, it doesn't start from there. Okay, here it goes. Okay, so it says press the seam allowance towards the front, which is fine. Um, trim the seam allowance, which is fine. I could do that. Press the seam allowance, which is fine. I could do that. And then it says turn the sleeve the wrong way out, the wrong side out. Straighten the seam and ensure it's right on the edge. Pin based and stitch on the machine. I mean, I, I don't know what it was referring to. What was it referring to? Because the sleeve is already... Um, you know sewn together so anyway i just couldn't figure that out and i mean first my first time using vicky sews i probably wouldn't be rushing to do another pattern of theirs uh, but again it could just be me maybe everybody else found it quite simple and easy to follow but unfortunately for me if i'm being honest i, have, I found it quite difficult so those were the points that i um have written down on my on my notebook about about this particular this particular item uh, garment um, and lastly as well just to say that you don't get the instruction booklet you get a QR code you scan that in and then you get it um, you get the document delivered to your your device and then you can just print that out um, but I will show you my one here I went for the art gallery um, rayon which is beautiful they have it also in the light pink colorway this is sort of their burgundy wine colorway look at all those lovely colors teals mustards pinks and it's very very floaty as you can see these are my cuffs and as you can see I've made I've just used those buttons there as opposed to um, covered buttons um, these are the rouleau loops there um, and I will show you actually the finish inside because that's what I was referring to so unfortunately for me my back here my back facing is just overlocked on the outside so if i had done that interfacing method that would be fully enclosed again my um facing pieces with the front are just overlocked and not enclosed as per the instructions um my sleeve seam allowance are again just overlocked and i haven't used the bias binding 
Um, and then also with the burrito method, not only did I think that it should have explained more how to do the burrito method, but also it doesn't tell you to make sure that the facings, the back facing, and so this is the back facing and the front facing are enclosed in the burrito. So this one, I just did it by fluke. And this one hasn't been enclosed, which is annoying. So I just had to hand stitch that down. And then for the other side, um, they're both hand stitched down as well. So that's a bit of a shame. Can you pick that up, please? Sorry, I've got Sander in here with me. Pick up the buttons, please. Um, so the overall blouse is actually very nice because I love that style anyway. I love the bishop sleeves. I love the flowiness. And of course, the fabric is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I think... In hindsight, if I was to make it again, I won't be rushing to make it again, just to, to be clear. But I think I would definitely do the um, the facing enclosures with the interfacing. And I would definitely try and attempt the bagging out of the cuffs, maybe using another tutorial and not their instructions. I definitely will not be doing the, the bias binding for the sleeves because I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, put it away, my love, please. Yeah, put it away. Put it away. And then the only other thing as well is for me, the V was really, really low. And um, I mean, I know there's low necks and I'm, I'm fine with, with, with it for the most part. But this actually, so where it goes out, so this is the first button here, that actually hit me here, right at the bottom of my bra. And I think that is far too low. So in the photos I'm going to show you now, I've had to pin it up um, at the V here because it just was far too low for me. Um, length is great and I could actually um, maybe go down a size so instead of doing the size 42 which is technically a UK 16 no UK 14 I would do the size 40 which would be a UK 12 because it is quite loose and baggy so I think that would work perfectly and also with the cuff I did go up a size in the cuff because Nicola did say it was quite um, quite fitted um, and I agree with her I would definitely keep the same same cuff which is probably the cuff for the size 44 and then um, go down to the size 40 everywhere else so that's that let me show you some photos of myself wearing it no my love can you put it in the box and put it away please thank you photos and that's it so um i hope i described everything and i hope i wasn't too negative i just thought I'd be honest for those maybe who are struggling, thinking that everybody's doing it perfectly and, um, you know, you're, you're not the only one that found it difficult if anybody else has found it difficult like I have. Uh, so that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully I will get another vlog out with um, this month's make in there for you uh, and in the meantime um, please do check out uh, Nicola's website. Um, as I say, um, for every... Um, for every set that they release in the subscriptions, they do have some leftovers and they sell them as a complete all set to sew uh, kit as well. So the Seasons of East Dress, I know they're selling a couple of um, those limited edition ones with fabric choices as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.